Got in. Got in, hold up. Try closing it, get Dr. Mesmer. You'll find getting out easier that way. Don's Walter, finest minds of their generation. Hey ho, Scullion. Good afternoon, Mr. Jimmingham. Key to the boathouse, please. Yes, sir. <clears throat> oh, I do believe you've got some fines, Mr. Jimmingham. Yes, let me just check. Yes, now let's see. Where are we? Oh, yes. Broken pump. You pump are a feast of information, Scullion. Cheeky young gentleman. <sighs> How's the master? Poorly, Mr. Scullion. They sent for the doctor, and he sent for a nurse. And Prelix has called an extraordinary meeting of college council. They're over there now. Very nasty, Walter. Very nasty. Yes, Mr. Zipser. I wonder if a journal I subscribe to has turned up here. It has not, Mr. Zipser. It's called the Medieval Peasants Review. And perhaps someone's taken it. Now, who in Porterhouse House would want to take a thing like that? It's got a very important article on deconstruction and the three-field system. Mr. Zipser, I do have a dying master on my hands. I see. I'll check again tomorrow. Studying in his rooms in Newmarket Week. A gentleman would be at the races. What are they doing there, Mr. Scullion? Deciding, Walter. Deciding what? Not deciding what. Deciding who. Voted chaplain? Yes. Twice. Then once more we reach stalemate. Unless one of you cares to change, or one of our two admirable candidates will withdraw. Uh, a dean? Mm -hmm. Senior tutor? Certainly not. We need a master who will keep us head of the river. I think the dean should reconsider his position. We need a master who in this mad and changing world will maintain tradition. A weakling will no longer do. Right. right. Gentlemen, right. gentlemen, I recall you to precedent to remind you of standing orders. Surely in any case, the master nominates his own successor. Yes, Professor Siblington, the master's word is final. We simply advise by making our own recommendation. Or, oh, as is now clear, by failing to make it. So, what happens next, Prime Lector? My dear Bursar, exemplum habens. Prosus illustre de cernit. Ipsi magister juobus coram collegis. On that, as on all else, precedent is perfectly clear. The master must now nominate his successor in the presence of two of us. He's not fit. Fit or not, that is the Porterhouse way. Now, may I ask one other fellow to accompany me? Oh, well. They're pulling back the curtains, Mr. Scullion. Well, I'd better take the master his tray. Always likes to have his tray from me. Porter's Lodge. Oh, yes, at once. Master's worse. Nurse wants an ambulance. Just taking the master his tray. But what about the ambulance, Mr. Scullion? Never heard about it. No more than you did. You know what we say in Porterhouse? Master dies in his own bed, or not at all. At least I have published a book which is one more than you. You know my view, if a little learning is a dangerous thing, think what harm a lot of it can do. Gentlemen, do try to observe the decencies. He's very ill. My 
apologies, Master. The college president. Master, this is very important. Can you hear me? Too well. Master, please attend. You must name your successor as Master of Porter House. Ah, Scullion. Yes, sir. Brought your trade, sir. A good man. There have been Scullions in the college ever since the founder. <laughs> a far... A farthing for the Scullion. You'll find that in the very first accounts. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pheasant, sir. <laughs> Chateau Latour, 71. Mm. Not now, Scullion. Master, the future of college is at stake. We presume it's one of us. A nod would count. Is it I? <laughs> I, Master? <laughs> Master, you did once indicate that I might, uh... Time for a cleric, surely. None of you. My pheasant. Then who, Master? Hmm? Ah. <laughs> Lord... Lord who? Muxlow. Lord Muxlow? He's done it. Oh, thank you. Yes, I will. At least he's done it. No, he has not, sir. Don't interfere, Scullion. This is not your concern. No, sir. But Lord Muxlow was master here before the First World War. See, he died in 1908, hairless. Died? Yes, sir, hairless. It was a porterhouse blue. Porterhouse blue. Oh, gone, Mr. Scullion? Porterhouse blue, Shepherd. That's nice. He'd have liked it like that. What's a porterhouse blue? Not you knew by now, Arthur. Stroke brought on by overindulgence. It's Ooh. always been a tradition in the college. of an era, that is. Well, won't affect us, will it? Oh, Master didn't name a successor, Sheffield. Now, that's never happened in Porterhouse in 532 years. You've a wonderful memory, Mr. Scullion. Mm -hmm. So, how do they decide now? Well, none of our business, is it, Mr. Scullion? It could be, Arthur, it could be. See, he's got to be a gentleman. Oh, Arthur, put the port out in the combination room and uh, listen hard. Right. To the master. The master. Master. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Especially in my own case, I notice. I had every right to expect to be the new master. We must face the future, Dean, however unfortunate that may seem to you. Surely this is quite without precedent. A master dying without naming his successor. Oh, he did, of course, name Lord Muxlow. But I feared even in a college as traditional as Porterhouse, an exhumed corpse for Master would be going too far. No. The Master, in my view, to punish us, did not name a viable successor. So statutes decree the decision passes right out of our hands. Out of college? Oh, indeed. It passes to the college visitor, who, as you know, is the Queen, who will unquestionably turn to the Prime Minister. Well, it could be anyone. Some reshuffled parliamentarian, a raincoat manufacturer. An ex-ambassador, a scientist. Just anyone. I, I fear for college. Uh, Arthur. Arthur, remove the chaplain's leg from the fire. He's been dreaming of the girls in Woolworths again. Well done, Arthur. Just in time. Gentlemen, gentlemen, to the late master, whose sense of mischief did not fail him to the last. Magistri de mortui ad piam memoriam. The late, the late master. master. What, wanker? 
Shut up, Foxton. That was the Prime Minister's office water. Why were they calling you, Mr Scullion? They weren't calling me. They were calling the Prime Lictor. They've chosen the new master. God for heavens. Well, isn't he in the government? Oh, he was, Walter, he was. Minister of Social Security. Now he's too wet, so they've sent him back to Porterhouse. Well, he's been here before. A scholar he was. He never liked the college. I don't believe it. God for heavens. Wakey, wakey, rise and shine. Uh, who's that? Better, Mr Zipsa. Just checking you're in. Dean's reporting a fine, if you've been a naughty boy. Uh, uh, I'm always in, Mrs Biggs. Not that I'm a tartar sauce for discipline. I usually have a, an arrangement with my gents. Not natural, is it? All you young men stuffed together like this. We've all got sexual parts, and they'll turn against us if we're not careful. Oh, don't think about that. I'll give all my energies to my thesis. Oh, what are you writing? Oh, the role of pumpernickel in medieval Westphalia. Mm. I always say you're my brainy boy. <laughs> right. Ready for the big event? Guess who's coming today? The new master, that's who. The one they kicked out of the government. Oh, um, that doesn't concern me. I've got nothing to do with the former life of the college. Such a ceremony. Ever so exciting when he makes his entrance. Eki magista vesta. Ergo, fe patifaciat et quasit autoritate renuntiatus. God, man, this is quite ridiculous. Quisnam nos appellat? Iusu reginae ex autoritate concilii primorum ac pontificum ab eoquem penis est summa potestas magister modo declaratus hic 
ego adatum postulo. Mandatum tecum first. Hoc signum jus meum declarat. Totally absurd. This is our ceremony, my lady. We kept Henry VIII waiting for ten minutes. No wonder he dissolved the monastery. <laughs> Per Deum, per Fidem, Reginae Datam, Nos Domus Portiori Soci, Te Salutamus. Rather distinctive, I always think. The last master was a great collector of period pieces. All that goes. Our taste is contemporary, isn't it, Gobbler? You should find this a great change from ministerial life, master. A happy return to your old college. I trust you'll find it a great relaxation. Gobbler has not come here for a sinecure. I have always been interested in educational reform. Reform without revolution, alteration without change. That is my motto. Uh, reform? Godber's always been active in causes, haven't you, Godber? The League Against Cruel Sports, the Committee for Racial Equality, and, of course, Lesbians for Peace. Though, in that, I am a little less active. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very fascinating. I do my best for my fellow man. Fellow person, Godber. Yes, fellow person. <laughs> There's a very attractive study through here, Lady Mary. I'm sure you'll find it has a lovely view. Godber, what is going on? Ah, the preparations for our annual feast this evening. God, but look, that's a whole ox. Yes, quite a sumptuous occasion, as you see. And those are dead swans. It's disgraceful. I'm going down to the kitchens right away. Well, women aren't allowed. Then it's time women were allowed. Well, there's no stopping Lady Mary once she gets the bit between her teeth. Now, there are eight courses, including cheese, so we need all the silver from the butter. And, of course, the five vintage wines. Now, have you got that, Abel? You've got five different wines, so you want five different glasses. How many do you want, Abel? Yes, good man, good man, off you go. Frank, Frank, now listen, I want you to go down to the cellars. I want you to bring all the... Yes, yes! Scullion! What, what is it? What is it? The master and his lady coming. In my kitchen! All right, all right, Sheffy. I'll deal with this. Now, you leave this to me. Right. Begging your pardon, no one's allowed in the kitchen. Speaking to your new master. Yes, my lady, but at the risk of being impertinent, these are Sheffy's rules, aren't they, Sheffy? No one is allowed in the kitchen whilst the feast is being prepared. All previous masters have respected this principle. Then God, but won't. Now, dead swans. That happens to be not only unspeakable, but illegal. No, begging your pardon, my lady. We do have Her Majesty's permission. Not the present Elizabeth, but the first. 
Now, the only ladies that are allowed in the kitchen are the cooks. You heard that, Godber. Mr. Scullion, I fear you're going to have to make a few changes to your little habits. Now I am master. And we'll make the abolition of this extravagance one of them. What would this do for the starving of the third world? Not a lot. Roast swan stuffed with widgeons a very acquired taste, my lady. Well, I shall certainly not eat any of it at the feast tonight. Ah, well, happily the problem will not arise. What do you mean? Women are not allowed at the porterhouse feast. This is quite outrageous. What kind of barbaric community is this? I'm sure you remember the porterhouse customs, Master. I recall you were an undergraduate here. Yes, and I see nothing has changed. Well, you should not count on that for much longer. Mary. Oh, dear, Mr. Scoggin, you shouldn't have spoken to the master's lady like that. Rude as an undergraduate, rude as a master. Only servants allowed in the kitchen, he knows that. Always been the porterhouse way. Foxton, I've got another appointment. Not joining us for the feast? But my dear fellow, it's the most glittering occasion of the year. Ah, but this is his night for going flashing, ah, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not going flashing, Foxton. I'm going to attend a lecture on birth control and the Indian subconscious. Oh, Jesus, Zipsy, you can't miss You know I never attend college occasions. I don't like Hooray Henry's. Excuse me. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. You always were a beastly man. Some of us come to university to work. Taxi! Oh, Have a good flash, yes. sir. <laughs> Come the feast, don't you? Yes, but you give me him. Good evening, sir. I fear the new master and his lady are not off to a good start. They were most unpleasant to Scullion. It may be proper to be vilely rude to one's equals. I have always considered it the worst of taste to be uncivil to servants. Exactly. Well, let's hope for a better evening. Arthur, listen. Keep the master's glasses fully charged as possible. He evidently needs to be taught the peculiar charm of our society. Right. Fully charged as possible. Oh. Ah, Master, welcome. Let me introduce some fellows you've not yet met. Uh, uh, Professor Siblington, uh, history. Uh, uh, Dr. Mesmer, medieval. And uh, Dr. Other. We are the only college in the university that really does have a Dr. A. N. Other. Uh, Arthur, a glass of Mansonia for the Master. Uh, or may I suggest... No, I want to work later. Let's stitch this up as quickly as possible. Tonight, Master? But this is the great event in the college calendar. Uh, we've been celebrating it since the 14th century. So it would appear, gentlemen. Let us go in.
All your predecessors on the walls, Master. We always say they're a great credit to the kitchens. Yes, I hope you don't expect me to follow them down the path into gross obesity and what was it called? A porterhouse. Blue, Master. Porterhouse blue. We consider it a proud tradition of college. Benedict Domine, nos et haec tua dona, quae de bonitate tua sumptuary sumus. <laughs> what feast is it, Mr. Scully? 530th since the founder. No, no, sir. 532nd. Should be. I've been to 45. <laughs> <laughs> We were the last college to abolish celibacy uh, for the fellows. Uh, when was that? Uh, five years ago? A mistake, in my view. It cost us dear on the river. You are a rowing man, master. I never did understand the connection between rowing and intellectual achievement. I say, isn't that Poface Evans? Used to be an undergraduate here. What's he doing? It's the new master, Chaplin. Poface Evans? Oh, really? I believe you were a student here. Perhaps I taught you, I forget. A happy time, I trust. I was, you didn't, it wasn't. Grammar school tyke, they called me. Butcher's boy. Youthful high spirits, master. But I did learn one thing. Ah! That after Porterhouse, there is nothing left in life to fear. To that I owe my political success. And to Lady Mary, of course. Good evening, young man. Is this birth control? Yes, I believe it is. Excellent. You shall escort me in. What's your college? Porterhouse, I'm afraid. Why are you afraid? Well, all they think about is rowing and stuffing their faces. A very enlightened young man. Allow me to introduce myself. Lady Mary Evans, your new master's lady, and a power in her own right. Oh, delighted. Zipser. What? Uh, Mr. Lionel Zipser. <laughs> One roast with widgeon. You'll find the widgeon gives it a certain gamma flavour. So good of that first great Elizabeth to grant permission. A lusty delicacy, fit only, she said, for monarchs and the men of Porterhouse. Congratulations to the chef. Yes, sir, I'll tell him. And tell him to make me a nut cutlet and bring me some eau de sauce. Yes, sir, what kind of sauce? Not wine, man, mineral water. Tell me, gentlemen, don't you find this a little indulgent, particularly in present economic circumstances when we're all being asked to make cuts? Oh, we never bother with present economic circumstances in Porterhouse. We find they go away after 50 years or so. In life, there are two things of utmost importance, sex and violence. In my country, we like to put a stop to both. Now, how to do it? Coil? Look? Pill? Dutch hat? No. The answer really lies with you men here. Yes, vasectomy. The little snip snip. And finally, may I say, what a pleasure it has been for me to come here to Cambridge and tell you a bit about the progress we are making with sterilizing the people of my country. So kind of you to come. Thank you. Good night. Mr. Zipser, it's been a pleasure to meet you. You must dine with us one day, healthily, of course. Thank you, Lady Mary. 
awfully good lecture. She's really on the ball, isn't she? Oh, yes, indeed. Why don't we all go back to my digs for cocoa and discuss it? Yes, what a good idea. They're doing the old boating chant. <laughs> yeah. Lord Wooford would have loved that, would he, Mr. Scullion? Oh, yeah. yeah. And he would have thrown the bones over his shoulder with the rest of them. Now, that was a real master. Yeah. Gentlemen, not like this one here. Oh. Lads will be lads, eh, my lady? Not if I have anything to do with it. That's it, Teffy. Fine feast. Can't remember it better. Good of you to say so, Mr. Scullion. Better than some deserve it. But we have to give up the old traditions, Mr. Scullion. Uh -huh. I don't believe it. Not done. College feast? Never, not one, not in 532 years to my certain knowledge. There is now. Fellows, porterhouse, members of the college. As your newly arrived master, I feel this is the perfect occasion to put before you some new thoughts on the role of institutions like ours in the modern world. Tonight, you have wined and dined, in my view, to excess. After such a meal, in every sense, rich. It is right to ask, what are the responsibilities of privilege, the duties of wealth, in the world of today? Today, you may say, what have I to do with today? Or, for that matter, tomorrow. The past will do. Gentlemen, I have to tell you, the past will not do. This nation, they say, suffers from the British disease. What is it? Piles. <laughs> Nostalgia. Refusal to change. And where is the infection deepest? In institutions like our own. Nowhere does the responsibility fall more heavily than on our ancient universities and nowhere more in our ancient universities than on this college. Ladies and gentlemen, or rather just gentlemen, for tonight I am conscious of an absent guest. My wife, Lady Mary, excluded because of sex. She should give it up then. <laughs> Tonight, young men, I can promise you a new era for Porterhouse. One that can excite us all. Porterhouse will throw its doors open wide. We will expand, modernize, take in scholars. Scholars? We will begin an appeal for a new building to be called Lady Mary Hall. A building for scholars, a center for excellence. Porterhouse will become what it once was, not with its eyes fixed on the day after yesterday, but on the day before tomorrow. <laughs> Let us all make this pledge. Porterhouse will change. <laughs> Scholars, new buildings, 
over my dead body. I expect he'll learn, Mr. Scullion. He won't learn. He's not a gentleman. Him with his knighthood, too. Gentlemen don't depend on knighthood, Sheffy. Gentlemen is gentlemen. Shoring up the ones we've got. He wishes to bring in scholars, Predator. Boys from comprehensives with rings through their noses. I can't imagine what the Prime Minister was thinking of. Presumably, how to be rid of a dreadful liability. Now we are saddled with it. The question is, what are we going to do? Do? What are we to do something? We've always managed difficult and obdurate masters in the past. <laughs> Canon Bowl wanted compulsory complaint. Oh, <laughs> let us pray our policy of amiable prevarication will defeat him as it has so many others. Quite. I have yet to meet the liberal who could withstand the prolonged discussion of inessentials. Might one suggest that we are perhaps being rather old-fashioned in some ways? Times are changing. And I believe that in some colleges, certain reforms... Uh, there, sir, what other colleges do is no concern of Porterhouse. They will learn the folly of their ways. I simply meant that perhaps some area of compromise... There can be no compromise with a man who is deliberately setting out to challenge the ancient traditions of college. We'll be betraying them if we don't fight his malicious schemes. But the master has complete authority. Gentlemen, I don't uh, see uh, how uh, we can uh, possibly... Uh, 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 you are underestimating him. This man means it. I agree with the dean. Thank you, senior tutor. Here, we must make our stand. We'll start with you, Bertha. Me? Go to him first thing tomorrow oh, and explain possibly. we simply cannot afford his changes. Make the position to totally you. plain. We are not a rich college. Though I must say, I can't ever recall a better feast. Good night. Gobba, I'm very worried about genital herpes. I beg your pardon, Mary? The statistics are really quite appalling. So are mine, I fear. I'm just looking at the college results. Do you know when a porterhouse man last got a first? I can't imagine. 1957, in geography. Well, of course, Godber. It's quite unnatural for these young men to live on top of each other like this in this fetid sexual atmosphere. Fetid sexual? They need female competition. It must make Porterhouse co-educational. <laughs> well, I've already appalled them once this evening at that dreadful feast. Oh, guzzle, guzzle, guzzle. Those gross men. It's a wonder they don't all have strokes. Oh, but they do. It's called a Porterhouse Blue. Isn't that for rowing? No, it's an apoplectic fit brought on by greed and gluttony. The dean seemed quite proud of it. He's a quite appalling man. He'll fight you. Oh, I'm quite sure I can handle him, Mary. Four years in the cabinet have taught me a trick or two. How soon I isolate the dean? The senior tutor only thinks about the river, so I make sure he gets his quota of beef steak for the rowing club. Then there's the bursa. That horrible little snob. Precisely. And he's revoltingly ambitious. So I'll fix him with a government committee. We must invite him to dinner. God, but I've already got myself on the committee for battered wives and the Samaritans. I shall have no time for dinner parties. No, quite, my dear. And you must do something about that insolent head porter. Yes, my dear. Really, he was awfully rude to you. I can't think why. Oh. <sighs> oh. You're <sighs> right, sir. Yes. Thank you, Scully. 
Tell the servants they excelled themselves. Yes, sir. They'd be very pleased. What a college this was once, eh, Scullion, when the young men were all so healthy, all so naturally violent. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, they were then, sir. Had a quality. A race apart. Arrogant, rude. <laughs> Something you could respect. Sir. Exactly. I never had any doubt, sir. Not like this new master. Now, that's what he's got, sir. Doubts. I mean, all these improvements. Oh. I'm glad we see eye to eye. But, uh... They can improve things as much as they like, Scullion. It never makes them any better. No, oh, sir. <laughs> Good night, sir. Good night, Scullion. I thought the lecture awfully good, don't you agree? Oh, yes, yeah, awfully good. As she so well pointed out, sex is terribly important, isn't it? Well, yes, it is, isn't it? It's, it's terribly important. <laughs> I mean, it really needs putting a stop to, doesn't it? You think that's possible? Oh, yes. If we can just get all the men to have vasectomies. I hope you're considering it. Oh, yes. <laughs> What's the time? Ten to twelve. More coke? Oh, no. They lock the college gates at twelve. Don't be silly. None of the colleges lock up at twelve. I'm a porterhouse. Oh, Lord, you better run like mad. Oh, God. God. You won't miss next week's lecture on genocide, will you? <laughs> Thank you, Arthur. Do you know who was here tonight? Poe faced Evans. Saw him as clearly as you playing that piano. Really, sir? This way? He was a scholar here, you know. Grammar school tyke. Ink on his nose and trousers right down past his shoes. Married some horse-faced woman with a title for her money and her influence. Father was a butcher. Yes, sir. That's our new master. Don't be silly, Arthur. Done in the kitchen and gone home. Something wrong, Mr. Scullion? Yes, the new master. That's what's wrong. Was to bring in scholars. Oh dear. Yes. It's never been a scholars' college. Character, not brains. It's always been the porterhouse way. Well, I suppose it's all exams these days, isn't it, Mr. Scullion? Should be exams for portering next. <laughs> exams don't mean a thing, Walter. You always pass them if you know how. What do you mean? <laughs> Never heard of scullions, scholars? How do you think some of these young men can pass their exams when they never opened a book and can hardly write their name in the dust with a stick, eh? I've no idea, Mr. Scullion. Oh, you sit down there, I'll tell you. Have you ever read Kant and Hobbes? Nietzsche? John Paul Sartre? I haven't, Mr. Scullion. <laughs> Have you? Well, not personally, no. But I've got unrivalled knowledge of those who have. I can get you 20 any day of the week down the Baron of Beef. Research students. Write you an essay for a fiver. Sit your exam for 500, if you got the right man to arrange it. Scallion ah, scholars. scholars there. <laughs> ah, you've got it. Oh, you you'll find them everywhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Ex-ambassadors to Washington. Senior civil servants, quarter of the House of Lords, half the BBC. <laughs> a royal. 
Or not ours, of course. Well, that's amazing, Mr Scully. Mm. Everything works if you leave it alone. Hey, come on. It's gone twelve. Time you're off home. Never mind, Mr Scullion. It won't happen. Dean will soon see to him. He's seen off better men. Really? I hope so, Walter. Good night now. Night, Mr Scullion. Good evening, sir. Dean's office for you in the morning and a fire. I can explain! Ah. Uh. 